By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have something really, really special for you because this is the first episode of the Timmy Talks Four Horsemen Popper Tournament. Yes, you've heard it right. Four Horsemen Popper. It's this just insane format that we're giving a go right here on Timmy Talks. The basic idea is quite nice. You just have the four horsemen sets. That's Arabian Nights, Antiquities, Legends and the Dark. And you only take the common cards out of that set. And with that card pool, you need to make a deck. And when I'm talking about common, I am talking about cards that are now printed as common. So if the cards were reprinted as common later on, you can use them in these decks. For example, the Urza lands were reprinted as common cards, so you can use them to make your deck with it. So um, yeah, this led to some really interesting matches. This is the first match, and in this match we're going to look at Robert, who is uh, playing with his Hellfire and Brimstone deck. It's black and red, and he's taking on my deck, the Pietro's Crew. It's blue and it's black. So we're going to look at this. Now, before we dive into the match, I would first like to point out that if you want to know more about this specific format, in the description below, you can find a link to the tournament website, which is actually pretty cool if I say so myself. We had 50 plus contenders joining in this tournament, all patrons, because this was a patron only event, and they just built the coolest deck. So if you want to see the deck photos, go to that website and you can see all the deck photos and of course more information about the specific rule set. Uh, another thing that you can find in the description below are the timestamps because as always I've put them there for you. For example, if you want to skip this introduction and skip the deck deck or check the deck deck later, you can simply choose the timestamp MTG Games and that will take you straight to the action. And as for now, we are going to start with the deck deck. I'm going to start with the deck of Robert, Hellfire and Brimstone. And here we see the deck of Robert. And I love the deck photo, Robert, first thing. And um, the second thing I notice is the beautiful Urk Raiders, but the card next to it, I'm a little bit afraid of that card. It's, I think your deck is kind of a ping deck looking at it, actually. You've got Kumbach Witches, which is a card from Arabian Nights. It's quite good. It's two black for a 1-3 creature, Summon Witch. And you can tap it to deal one damage to any target, and then your opponent can deal one damage back to any target. Now, when I'm looking at your creatures, they all have a pretty big toughness. So that one damage back is probably going to go to your life total. It's not going to go to one of your creatures because they're just pretty beefed up, right? I'm not going to be able to kill them. And the reason that I'm calling this a ping deck is because besides the Kumbach Witches, you're also playing with four Grape Shot Catapult, that is a 2-3 creature from the Antiquities expansion for 4 mana and you can tap it to deal 1 damage to any flying creature. So if your opponent has a flyer and you have a Kumbach Witches and a Grapeshot Catapult, you can already deal 2 damage to that creature. And then you also have a single copy of Brothers of Fire, that's yet another way to deal damage to your opponent's creatures. And then you combine that, I think, with Bloodlust. And Bloodlust is this card that gives plus four, minus four to a creature, and the creature's toughness cannot go lower than one. But you don't really want it to. So you can actually use Bloodlust here as a removal card, right? You play it on um, a creature of your opponent, and then you deal the final point of damage with your Kumbach Witches, or with your Grapeshot Catapult, or your Brothers of Fire. Or there's a really good card here, Pyrotechnics. Pyrotechnics is, I think, insane in this format. It's one red and four to cast for a sorcery that reads, Pyrotechnics deals four damage divided as you choose among any number of targets. So that means you could have a scenario with this deck where you have all your pingers on board and you divide the damage in like the optimal way and then you use your pingers optimally and then you can probably kill like, I don't know, three creatures with one Pyrotechnics. I wouldn't be surprised. So I, I'm a little bit concerned because on top of that, you also have Ashes to Ashes that removes two creatures from the game. That is huge. You also play with four Chain Lightnings. This is looking like a very strong list. And I'm, I mean, I'm concerned. Um, you also have two Jalum Tomes, by the way. I also play those Tomes. There is very little card draw in this format. So I think that's a very wise decision, especially when you're later in the game. Um, you can have the scenario where you're kind of mana flooded and then you find one of your Felwer Stones late in the game. You're like, I don't want to have a Felwer Stone now. And then you can use your Jalum Tome to just get rid of it and in exchange, hopefully find a creature or some burn. So I think that's a very good inclusion. Okay, this is the deck of Robert. Now let's take a look at my deck, De Pietro's Crew. 
And here you see my deck. Sorry for the messy deck photo. I probably just should have organized the cards better. It probably looks nicer. Anyway, this is De Pietro's crew. The story is that uh, De Pietro is trying to find a new crew after all his ships have sank. The ghost ship. So there are four ghost ships in this deck. And of course, they're also drowned uh, working on the ghost ships. But the thing is, the drowned or basically um, drowned crew members, right? They're now zombies. And, and zombies are nice, but they're just not as hardworking as De Pietro's former crew. So he decides to get some robots in his, uh, in his uh, working on his ships. And those come in the form of the Brass Mans. And they're actually altered to be Iron Mans. So this was a present sent to me by the Rhineland Avengers. Thank you, Martin, for these. And um, yeah, I thought, let's play them. And I think they're actually pretty solid in this format. It's one mana for a 1-3 creature. So they're really good at kind of stopping early aggression from my opponent. And hopefully they're going to buy me some time. And later in the game, I'm hoping to deploy, of course, my ghost ships and also my Azur Drakes. They're two four flyers. I'm also playing with uh, two unstable mutations. So I can put those unta unstable mutations on them and, and uh, wreck some havoc. I'm also playing with um, uh, Boomerang. I think Boomerang is quite good in the format because I'm expected to find... Uh, a lot of Rook Eggs and Boomerang is great because if you unsummon a token, the token is gone, right? So I think Boomerang is useful. Boomerang is also also useful against, you know, instant trickery. You can save your own creature with Boomerang, but you can also, for example, in this case, the Bloodlusts that Robert is playing, if he's playing a Bloodlust, in response, I can cast a Boomerang. So I think Boomerang is quite useful in the format. It's, of course, a first time for me as well that I'm playing this. I've never played this before. The same thing goes for my opponent. So we'll just have to wait and see what cards are going to be valuable and what cards are not. Now, one of the cool things about this format is that nothing is banned. There is just no banned list. We're trying this out without banning any cards. And that means that I can also play Oubliette. Now, Oubliette is also flavorful, I think, a really good card because usually on these pirate ships, you have like these places where you just, you know, drop your enemies in these kind of, I wouldn't say dungeons, but you, you know what I mean, right? You go below deck and there's like a prison cell where they put you in and they just simply forget about you. That's exactly what an oubliette is. And um, oubliette is really, really good in this format because there is no enchantment removal. So this card will just stay there. There's no way to destroy an enchantment in this format. Maybe you may think this is broken, I actually don't think it's all that broken because in the end, what it does, it takes care of one creature. So it's basically a one for one trade, right? It's, it's, I think in that regard, an Ashes to Ashes is actually better than an Oubliette. I am playing, I believe, two Ashes to Ashes in this deck as well. The reason I'm not playing more is, you know, Ashes to Ashes has this cost. It's five life that you've got to pay when you play it out. So it is kind of risky. I'm also playing with Jalen Tomes, just like Robert. And um, yeah, that's that's actually it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, we've seen my deck. We've looked at the deck of Robert. So all we can do now is, uh, is go to the match and enjoy this first episode of the Four Horsemen Popper Tournament. Game number one, here we go. So I'm sitting on the right here, starting with a basic island and a pass turn. On the left, we have Robert with the Hypnotic Spectre playmat. So he's playing with the um, black and red deck. And I'm playing with the blue and black deck. Four Horsemen Popper here. Episode number one, playing a Brass Man here in turn two. There are tap for two Urk Raiders. Is there a response? Oh, there is a Four Spike. Sweet. So Four Spike counters whatever my opponent plays. Unless my opponent can pay an extra one, then it doesn't counter anymore. So this is a really sweet Four Spike. I could consider attacking here, attacking with the Brass Man, putting Robert on 19. Force Spike, of course, a counterspell that's really good early on in the game, but as the game continues, uh, it becomes weaker and weaker because it's easier and easier for my opponent to have a mana open. Oh, another Force Spike! I guess my whole hand's full of spikes here. Taking care of the Jalem Tome here of Robert, that's kind of a big deal. Jalem Tome. One of the only ways in this format to have card selection. Now, I wonder, yes, I am paying the one to untap the Brass Man. Remember, Brass Man, uh, if it's tapped during your upkeep, you can pay one to untap it. Tapping two here for a Drown. So the 1-1 one, one creature from the dark for one black, I can regenerate it. Attacking here with my Brass Man again, putting Robert on 18. The Brass Man is doing work here. Let's see what Robert can do. 
He's got four mana. And he's not playing out anything, just passing the turn here. I'm keeping the Brassman tapped, so perhaps I have an Azur Drake. I'm first attacking here with the Drown, so now I'm putting Robert on 17. Tapping four here. And yeah, casting the Azur Drake. I kind of expected this. And also playing a Swamp. For me, uh, four is a pretty important number because that means I can start playing out my Ghost Ships and my Azur Drakes. Of course, Ghost Ship is double blue though, and I don't have two blue. Ooh, Ashes to Ashes. It's going to remove two creatures from the game. Does mean Robert is going to take five damage himself, but this is very well played. And he also has a follow-up in the form of the Urk Raiders. Ooh, this is a problem for me. So all of a sudden, the, the situation of the game is completely changed with that one Ashes to Ashes. Playing out another Swamp, only one card in hand still, and having to pass. And look at Robert, he still has three cards in hand, going to four cards now. He has to attack with the Urk Raiders. Well, actually, he can choose not to, but then he takes two damage. I'm expecting him to attack here. Oh, Chain Lightning! Taking care of my Brass Man. And here we can see the power of Robert's removal really taking care of all my creatures. Three creatures gone. What can I do here? Two cards in hand. I'm on 18 after that attack. This is going to be tricky. I'm a little bit in the tank here and just passing the turn. That is so unfortunate. I wonder what I have in hand. Perhaps more lands. Who knows? Another attack for two. Gonna drop to 16. And there is a Dragon Engine, one three creature from the Antiquities expansion, and for two you can give it plus one plus O, oh, so he can pump it. The game has really changed now in favor of Robert. I was ahead, but that's not gonna last. Tapping two black here. Okay, there's a Kumbach Witches. Tapping two, tapping three, and playing an Oubliette. Going to take care of the Dragon Engine, going to put it in the Oubliette. And as I discussed in the deck deck, there is no enchantment removal in this format. So that enchantment is going to stick, going to stay there. So that's really good news for me because I can use the Kumbach Witches to block the Urk Raiders. It's a 2-3 and Kumbach Witches is a 1-3. So I've kind of regained control here. There's the attack. I wonder if I'm going to block... I am, of course, there is a risk for a Pyrotechnics here, but it's not coming. So a pass turn, untapping. What am I going to do? Tapping three again, and I'm going to cast a Jalum Tome. Okay, the Jalum Tome could be quite good. Maybe I could just have a land in hand, and I could get a card in return. And I'm passing turn here. So... Tapping two more black. Okay, there's a Kumbach Witches. This is super annoying because now he attacks. I can block Kumbach Witches, of course, still has summoning sickness. But next turn, if I block, Robert can use the Kumbach Witches to kill my Kumbach Witches with that one point of damage. Oh, ashes to ashes. This is so important. Putting him on, I mean, putting myself on 11, but he loses both of his creatures. This is huge. And Ashes to Ashes plays such an important role in this game number one. I can now also attack for one if I want to. I think I shoot, to be honest. I don't really see a reason not to attack. Exactly, attacking for one here. Putting Robert on 11. So both of us are at 11 right now. Already a really interesting game number one. We both have tons of mana. Robert still has a slight card advantage with two cards in hand, but of course, if those cards are useless, he's going to go to 10. Maybe he's got, for example, Ashes to Ashes in hand, but you can only use it if your opponent has two creatures. And what's exactly, I'm finally using the book because I was wondering, what do I have in hand here? Discarding a land, attacking for one, Robert's going to go to nine, and I'm passing turn. So Robert here tapping two for a Kumbach Witches, so both of us having witches on the board. But I'm two life points ahead. Going to use the Jalum Tome again. What am I going to discard? And am I going to find discarding another land? So I guess I'm pretty much land flooded. At least I've got the Jalum Tome. Tapping three here. Another Oubliette. So I'm putting the witches into the prison. 
And that means I can attack again with my Kumbach, which is putting Robert on eight. Like it's a slow process, but I'm getting there. Slowly but surely. I am a little bit concerned though, because Robert has a lot of burn. I wonder what's in his hand. Perhaps he's land flooded as well, or has an ashes to ashes in hand, like I mentioned before. He's on eight. So I'm going to untap. I think the Jalum Tome is super helpful for me here. Attacking for one, he's going to go to seven. I'm going to use, you see, I'm going to use the Tome again. So it just allows me to drop the excess lands that I have in my hand and, you know, find useful cards instead, or hopefully find useful cards instead. Passing turn to Robert here. He's found another mountain, so he's also pretty land flooded and just a pass turn. So I can put him on six right now. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I can use the Tome again to drop another land. I wonder, I think if I have another creature, I should wait with playing it out. Although I could do it now, because if he has an Ashes to Ashes, he's going to put himself on one. And when he plays it in response, I can ping with my Witches. So Ashes to Ashes is kind of useless now for Robert. He is finding a Desert, which is quite nice in, in combination with his ping strategy. So Desert deals one damage to an attacking creature after it's dealt its damage. So that's kind of nice synergy with his Kumbach Witches and his Grapeshot Catapults. Using the Jalum Tome on end step here. Again, ditching. Well, not a, not a land in this case, but a Felwer Stone. Attacking here. And he's going to do one damage. He is going to go to five. Yeah, why not use the desert if you have it? Oh, that's interesting. Then he uses a Bloodlust. This is such a cool play. Bloodlust in combination with the desert. Oh, Robert, I am liking this. What happens here is desert does one damage to the witches, and then you change uh, the power and toughness with the Bloodlust. Give it plus four, minus four. And with that one damage still, it means it dies. And now I'm playing my Azur Drake, by the way. So I was kind of playing around the Ashes to Ashes, I think. So this is still going to be tough for Robert, but what a nice player. How he killed my Kumbach Witches. That's just uh, fantastic. Well played, sir. Well played. But I do think you're quite unfortunate finding all those lands. You, you basically just need a Jalum Tome uh, like, uh, like I have, but I was able to counter your Jalum Tome earlier in the game with my four spike. Tapping one blue here. Oh, unstable mutation. Is this the end of game number one? It is. And there was that ashes to ashes that we talked about. That is brutal. So winning this game number one, both of us are going into our sideboards and we'll catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. Robert on the play here, starting with a swamp and a pass turn. Let's see if I can again find those four spikes early in the game. I felt they were kind of important. No blue for me though, just a black and a pass turn. Are we gonna see, there's the Urk Raiders, unable to do anything about it. Hopefully I can find a Brass Man tapping two here. There is a Drowned, kind of hard to see, but it is a Drowned one, one for one black regenerate. There's the attack, gonna take the damage, drop to 18. Ooh, even more pressure, another Urk Raiders. And there's a Chain Lightning on the Drowned as well. Oof, this is bad. This is such a good start by Robert here. Playing an Island. I, I need to go at least to 4 mana before I can cast a decent blocker. Unless I can, of course, find a Brass Man. Tapping 3 here. There's a Jalum Tome, the card that was so good in, uh, in game number 1. The problem here is I'm under pressure. So right now the card just doesn't look so great. I'm on 18. I'm not going to drop to 14 with those Urk Raiders. Are we going to see even more creatures? There's another creature on the board in the form of a Grapeshot Catapult. Another 2-3 body. That means 6 damage next turn. I need to do something against it. Hopefully I can maybe play an Ashes to Ashes, an Oubliette, something. Kumbach Witches is something, but not great. It will block one of the attackers, but I'll still take four points of damage. I'll drop to 10, probably. It's not looking good for me. Robert's really doing work here. It looks like we're getting a very short game number two. There's an attack for six. Yeah, I got to block one, take four, go down to 10. And 
and he's tapping more five mana oh pyrotechnics he's gonna kill my kumbach which is and deal damage to me as well this is so painful so what he can do now is simply deal one damage to the witches exactly kill the witches and three damage to me oh man using a boomerang here on one of the creatures here of robert could have of course used the boomerang on my own creature as well perhaps that would have been better i don't know i mean it's tough at this point i've got my back against the wall finding an azure drake so azure drake of course is a great blocker the problem here is all the creatures in robert's deck have three toughness or almost all of them that means i cannot kill them with my two powered creatures that's the big problem here blocking one of them taking two more points of damage going to five that means that i can now no longer use my ashes to ashes of course he's recasting the grape shot catapult here this is just a huge problem tapping three okay playing an oubliette gonna take care of the grape shot catapult but again it's, it's not helping at least i've got mana open for jalem tome hopefully finding perhaps another oubliette with the jalem tome he's Gun attack with both, of course. Blocking one, taking two, going to three. Are we going to see... Oh, there's a bloodlust over the unblocked creature, the Urk Raider. Death by Urk Raider, which is pretty cool, but still, death. So that means it's 1-1, one, one, and we're going to game number three. Game number three, it's 1-1. One, one. At least I'm on the play. Oh, taking a mulligan here. Look at my hand. I think I saw an oubliette and just lands. That's bad. Okay, so I'm going to take some extra time here to shuffle up. I mean, that game two, that was just so brutal. So I am a little bit worried after that that one. So really taking my time to shuffle here. Um, if you like, maybe I can, it's time for some commercials, I guess. If you, uh, if you like the sleeves you see, you can actually buy them. There's a link in the description below. And um, you can get a discount as well if you use the uh, Timmy code. It's all in the description below. So if you like the sleeves, go and have a look. They're pretty good quality and you can actually choose what you want to print on them. So you don't have to go for the Timmy Talks uh, sleeves. Although they're super cool, of course, but you don't have to. So shuffling up here. And uh, I could already see there's a Kumbach Witches on the bottom, so I'm not going to find that one. Quickly making some stacks, going to count the seven. And I mean, like I said in the deck deck section, there's not a lot of card draw in the format. So you really don't want to take a mulligan and you really don't want to take a double mulligan. So even if the, if the hand's still pretty average, I'm probably going to keep it anyways. So putting one card on the bottom here and now Robert's going to check if he wants to keep as well. Oh, look at that. Am I putting two cards on the bottom? Did I take a double? Did I already take a mulligan? Oh, this is so bad. Going to five cards in game number three. Oh, man. I missed that. I guess I already took a mulligan. Double mulligan. That is super tough here. Finding an island and a pass. Is Robert going to take the risk here to play out the Urk Raiders? He's seen the Force Spike, of course. I think he's not. I think he's waiting for an extra land. That's probably a good decision. Playing an island here. So land number three. At least I've got enough lands. Let's see if I can also play some cards out. There's a Drowned. Again, I believe I've played a Drowned in every single game thus far. And I'm only playing with one copy. Oh, there's Desert. That's such a nice answer to the Drowned. Oh, and this is also nice. The Kumbach Witches. Remember, Drown does have Regenerate, but it's, of course, super annoying if I have to keep one black open to regenerate it. I think I'm not going to do that if I have some other options. Anyway, passing turn here. This is going to be a tough matchup for me. Just starting with five in this format, I think, is super brutal. It looks, like, it looks like Robert cannot find red sources, by the way, so at least that's something. He does have the Kumbach Witches. He could consider just attacking with it, but he's not. And finding another Swamp. I mean, four mana is kind of important. Now I can cast cards like Ghost Ship and Azure Drake. Of course, I'm hoping to find the, the Pietro for you guys and cast that, but it's really like, really has a high casting cost. Tapping three here. Is there going to be an Oubliette? Yep, there's an Oubliette. Looks like I'm almost changing my mind. The reason is probably because I know that he can now kill my Drowned, but 
I just have to accept it. I think Drown in this matchup is really, really bad. I probably should have boarded it out, but I didn't. So he can now kill it with the witches. And now he's found a red source, by the way. Using deserts and okay, playing out the grape shot catapult. And he's gonna pass. Okay, so he's not gonna kill the drown. That's quite interesting. I really expected him to do that. Perhaps he missed it. Or perhaps he decided, you know, it's just a 1 1, it's not that important. Playing an Azur Drake right now. 2 4 flying from Legends. And now he is using the Witches. So I guess he just missed it and he's still killing it now. It doesn't matter much. A pass turn. So this is the interesting thing with this deck, right? If I would attack Robert right now with my Azur Drake. He could deal two damage with the deserts after damage, then one damage with the grape shot, then one damage with the witch hunter. Look, uh, sorry, the Kumbach witches. Look at what he's doing right now. Bloodlust on the Azur Drake, killing my Azur Drake. And this is what his deck wants to do, right? It really wants to kill just a lot of the opponent's creatures with that pinging strategy, playing a Jailum Tome as well, and then I'm taking my turn. Things are looking so bad for me here in game number three. Playing another Azur Drake. At least that's a, that's a good blocker. But again, all his creatures have toughness three, so I'm actually not killing them with my two power creatures. Oh, chain lightning! Then he's going to use the witches or the catapult. He's going to use the catapult, of course. Oh man, this is it is nice to see Robert that your deck is doing what it's supposed to do. That's pretty nice. But for me, it, it sucks. <laughs> you know, for me, it's really bad. Oh, and I started so well in game number one. That is a pity. Okay, finding a Kumbach Witches as well, but they're just not as good as they are in Robert's deck because his deck is all catered towards those pingers. There's another Chain Lightning taking care of my Witches. And there's an attack for three, going down to 15. And there's the Urk Raiders, hands empty. But uh, I'm in trouble. I am in trouble so much. What can I cast here? Another Oubliette. Okay, probably going to take care of one of the pingers. Exactly. In this case, taking care of the Grape Shot Catapult and a pass. Still means I'm taking three damage this turn. Going to drop to 12. And remember, Robert has the Jalem Tome. Exactly. So he can just, you know, discard the cards he doesn't want. In this case, the Lance. And actually find some creatures to deal damage to me. I'm going to drop here down to 12 after taking three. And there's a pass. So I, I have four cards in hand, at least that's something. Tapping all four, what are we going to see? A ghost ship. Again, it allows me to block the creatures, but I'm, I can't kill them. The longer I'm looking at my deck, the more I'm missing desert. Like a desert would really make my two powered creatures better because I can just inflict them that extra point of damage. Oh, here we go again. Chain lightning with the Kumbach witches. Robert, your deck is good, man. This is impressive stuff. I'm going down to 10 with the Urk Raider. And he's discarding a Swamp and a Pass Turn. I'm going to tap two, another Kumbach Witches. I'm just going to keep trying. But what, what Robert can do now is simply only attack with the Urk Raiders. If I block on the Kumbach Witches, he can use his Kumbach Witches to kill mine. So it's, it's still good for Robert. It's a win-win either way. So discarding another Jalem. And what is he going to fi find here? Tapping four. No ta Yeah, okay. Tapping four. Keeping the desert untapped. Playing another Grape Shot Catapult. I mean, this has been an uphill battle from the start. Starting with just five cards and that pinging strategy working so well for Robert. So I have to take the two damage and I'm going to drop to eight. I mean, there's just really not much I can do here. Okay, finding a book for myself, but it's too slow, too little, too late. Using it, though, hoping for an Ashes to Ashes. But, I mean, remember, Ashes to Ashes deals five damage to me. You see, here he goes, starting to ping me, knowing that he knows that he wants me to put, to put my life total below five so that I can no longer cast Ashes to Ashes. And I think he's going to get there easily. He's going to attack now probably with the catapult and the um ooh, there he goes 
and with the Urk Raiders. First, he's going to use his Jalen Tome, discarding the Ashes to Ashes here. He doesn't even need it. Attacking with both. Going to take the damage. Going to go down to three. That means my Ashes to Ashes plan is out of the window as well. Nothing I can do against it. I need a miracle here. I need a sweeper, but it's not in this uh, in this colors or in this format. Tapping a swamp down and an island. Okay, Sage of Letnam. We haven't seen the Sage yet, so it's nice that I can play the Sage, but it's not going to help me. He's going to put me on two. Oh, man, oh man. There was nothing I could do in this game. There's an Ashes to Ashes, of course. Going to go down to 11, and, uh, and that's it. At least, okay, at least I'm playing a Boomerang. And that means I can save one of my creatures, but it, 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 it doesn't matter. That's it. I am dead. Done and dusted. And a con Oh, I had the Pietro in hand, but couldn't cast it. Oh, that's unfortunate. I wanted to cast my Pirate Captain, but couldn't. I want to cast my Captain. Captain Sa, good Sa. Anyway, uh, congratulations, Robert, for winning this one. Uh, it was really nice to see your deck in action. I think you've made a very cool and creative deck. Super to see it. And um, maybe, maybe you're going to continue in this tournament. And if you've enjoyed this match and if you like this tournament, make sure to come back next week, Tuesday, because then we have another match for you from the Four Horsemen Popper Tournament. And that was the episode for today. So if you like this, like I said, next week, Tuesday, more action. And then we're going to look at these two decks, Desert Mechanics versus Bloodthirsty Eggs. I already love the deck name. So we're going to look at this battle next week. And before you go, I would just like to ask you to like, share and comment on this video if you haven't already done so. These things are completely free and they help the channel move forward. So if you like my content, please support me that way. And if you're new to the channel, welcome to Timmy Talks. Please consider to subscribe to my channel and ring that bell. And then there is one last thing that I would like to talk about, and that is the Timmy Talks Patreon page. So if you like my content and um, you want, would like to do more than just like and subscribe, um, you can also become a patron of the show and support Timmy Talks financially. The cool thing is, if you do, there are some perks. The first one is that you can join tournaments like this. So all the tournaments that I organize here on Timmy Talks, I do to thank my supporters. So they're for channel members and patrons only because I want to thank them for their support for all that they do for the channel. So if you want to join in on these tournaments, please consider becoming a patron as well. It already starts with just $1 a month. Another perk is that you also get access to the Timmy Talks Discord where you can meet all the other patrons and you can all chat about magic. Of course, I'm on the Discord server as well. And then last but not least, if you become a patron, no matter at what tier level, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. Ik het dus, ik het dus, somba kazee.